Good morning. Well, this morning we're going to do some photo etch. Now, before I forget to mention it, one of the viewers very kindly sent us a link to a PDF of the Yamato uh, manual, and it is excellent. I was looking at it uh, last night. Uh, it, yeah, I, I found that it was, uh, um, well, first of all, it's excellent in that it is very sharp. It is probably just as good as if, it, if you had the manual right here and could look at it closely. Uh, you can zoom in on little areas and so on. Well, the, sometimes when you, when you get a PDF, when you zoom in, it gets very pixelated. Th this doesn't. It stays sharp. Now, I found that uh, I was looking at step one, and uh, right away in step one, it, it it's, looks like it wants you to do a bunch of stuff, and it's, it, it's kind of like, uh, it's intimidating. I, I don't know if it's a, a case of, uh, I, I'm thinking that I probably won't be able to do it. I think that once I would have the piece of, say, photo etch or whatever in my hand or in front of me, and I could see it, then I would know what it is they're trying to tell me to do, in other words. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it looks like it's, it's not going to be an, an, an easy kit to build from going by the manual. Now, uh, well, you, you, can, uh, you can check out uh, yesterday's comments and, and you'll find the link and you can look at it yourself. Anyway, uh, where, where are we going here now or how did we get to this place? Well, I guess what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to roll back and, uh, and just see how it is we got to this place and then, and then we'll, we'll continue on. But uh, we're going we're gonna to be doing some photo etch today. All right, I'm going to want to be so careful that I don't let this ping out of my tweezers because I'll never find it. And there is only the two, and we need two. Okay, so you'll recognize this piece here as the H33. It has to go into the, the shorter one, goes into this side right here. And the longer one will go into the other side, or into this one here, depending on which one we're going to do. Anyway, what I wanted to mention was this part here, the H20s, they had to be filed down to make sort of a, a, a camphor uh, so that I could get it in. Otherwise, it just did not want to go into this part. Um, so, like I said, I had, to, I had to file it down almost at about a 45 degree angle and then use the extra thin to soften the plastic in in the uh, in the D21, and then it eventually went. But it, it took quite a bit of pressure. I don't know if anybody else had had this problem uh, with this kit, or maybe the Nelson was the same way. Or it could be that if you built it, you can't remember that. Anyway, I'm going to just uh, recompose here. Maybe I'll use the helping hands. We'll lay this on its side. Let gravity be our friend. And uh, we'll try and put this piece in that hole. I'll put on the macro lens. Now, I did not do a dry run. Maybe that was kind of stupid on my part, but I do believe that this is going to go down. Okay. Yeah, that looks all right. Let me look on the monitor here. Well, I can see a little bit of flashing here on the edge, but you know, you, you've got to understand how incredibly small this is. Okay, just a slightly different perspective here. I move back a little bit more.
couldn't really tell. Did that go right down into the hole, or is it... I, th I think it is. I'll just wait a moment and then uh, maybe I'll have to take it out of the uh, alligator clip and have a little closer look. Now as for the six ladders that have to go on the sides, I uh, paged ahead to see, you know, what what will this module look like with these parts on it. And uh, the, the ladders will be quite visible, at least the ones on the outside. So I think what, I, what I'm going to do is uh, what, I, what I had mentioned earlier, I'm going to do the, the brass black thing and then just sort of glue them onto the sides. Um, I got a bit of a seam there that's showing pretty bad. Wonder if maybe I should sand that down a little bit now that the glue is dried. I guess where the uh, where the glue sort of squeezed out. But but these ones here are pretty good. I got the uh, I did work on the seams a little bit, just in case somebody's wondering. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that now while I'm thinking it. I'll see if I can sand that down, and we'll take a look at it afterwards. Okay, perfect, no. Better, yes. Okay, we have basically done step 26 now, except for the ladders, which we are going to do later. So we got to go back now to 25. And... Uh, if we find the E sprue, like it uh, looks like most of our plastic stuff is on the E sprue, some, some of the parts have already been broken off. I don't think we need this part here right now, but we do need this piece right here. Now when I say broken off, I think it's we, we cut them off if I'm not mistaken, and I, I can't remember why. Maybe because they were sort of sticking out, or, or maybe, maybe they were fault coming off. Anyway, we uh, we need this piece here. We we need uh, 24 and and 8. Well, I don't, I don't even need to look at the numbers. I mean, this this one is obviously the the 8. So uh, now let's not get too ambitious here and and wreck something. Okay, so we got the 8. Now we need the 24, which is obviously this piece. Okay, now what else do we need that starts with E? We need an E6 and an E4. Alright, uh, okay, this one says 4. I know you can't see it, and I can hardly see it too, but. That's the four, and the six would be, uh, get the light just right, okay, it's this one right here. And very carefully there, not to nip too close. All right, anything else starting with E? Okay, now we need some C stuff and an H. Um, okay, and a bunch of photo etch. Now this this is sort of another one of those starfish things. And it looks looks like it's going to be maybe a little easier to make this one because the uh, the uh, angle brackets, the, the or gussets if you want to call them that, it looks like they're attached already and you just have to fold them down. So that'll be a lot easier than having to try and glue them into place like I think we had to do on, was it the hood starfish? It was a little difficult if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's, uh, now ob we, we obviously can't go ahead and, and start gluing things together like like this piece here. It would go like this and then this this goes on, on top of it. But, but we can't glue it in until we get the starfish formed and sandwich it in, well, 
I guess I don't need to explain it, do I? Okay, the C sprue. As near as I can tell, we just need one piece of it right here, the C28. That's a big sprue. There's a lot of stuff on it, but it's mostly big stuff, and I think once we get going, we'll empty it out pretty quick. This is the 28 right here. Okay, so now we got that. Now it looks like we need uh, several pieces off of the H sprue. Okay, there are two H sprues. So would that mean that there's going to be one number 8 on this one and one number 8 on the other one? Okay, here's the number 8 and they're, no, they're both, both right there. Are we supposed to make two of these units? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, okay, well we'll just uh, sort of play it by ear here. Alright, let's get some of these pieces here. We need a couple of the eights. Alright. Now the nice thing about the number eight, it looks like an eight even when it's upside down. Which in your case it is. Because the nine right next to it looks like a six. Okay, so we got that. Uh, they look a lot like the ones we just nipped off a little while ago and glued on the, those other parts. Okay, so we got the eights. Okay, I take it back, they are different. If I can turn these over, see that? There's a little, a little hole or something. I suppose it's supposed to represent where the optical unit looks out. There, you can see it now. I think this one's got the same thing. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. All right, now we need a piece called H21. Okay, the number 45 is not anywhere near this part, but this has got to be it. I can get the cutter in there and not move it out of the camera's view. There we go. All right, now we need a very small piece, L25. And it must be small because it's even smaller than the photo itch piece that we're going to have to make that's going to go beside it. L25, where are you? And it is kind of detailed as well, if you notice. Just very, very slightly, it's it's detailed. At least I, I can see it. Okay, as long as I've got the macro lens on, we may as well get this Q11. Then we'll go back to the L sprue, because we will not be needing the macro lens for that one. Yeah. Looks like it might be bent just a little bit. Or maybe it's my imagination. Probably be bent when I get through with it. Okay, here we are back on the L sprue, and we need L15, which is this long mast. Now I'm going to go very, very gently here. I suppose the best thing would have been to have cut the fragile part off first, but I think if I'm very careful here, I want to slip the macro lens back on. And I, I just want to show you here how easy it is to accidentally cut in the wrong place. Okay, here we are at the very top of L15. And it's a an antenna of some kind. Um, in fact, these, these things here probably are supposed to represent insulators, I would think. And on the top here, I can envision what's supposed to go there It'll be another one of those. Maybe I'll turn my, my cutter the other way. K 
tricky and try and try and nip this off flat and then I don't need to trim it later because I do believe that this part that I'm going to touch right now stays on and it's prob probably going to go through a hole in a piece of photo etch and like I say we, we did that I think on the Bismarck and I kept bending it okay here we go it's loose it's loose all right let's try not to break this now I was noticing that if I try to put this in my tuna fish tin it just almost fits but not quite and I can envision the end getting broken off because it gets pushed down so I think what I'm going to do is after I get the flashing all cleaned off it like there's one two three four and I think this on the end, I'm not sure about that. Now is this on the end a piece of flashing or is that a piece of, uh, a better check? I, I think maybe that this is a part here that I'm holding on to right now. Anyway, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a test tube for safekeeping afterwards. Anyway, what we're going to have to do now what time have I got here? It's about 19 minutes to 8. And we've made pretty good progress here. I'm going to maybe just uh, uh, remove the flashing off some of this stuff. I don't know how much I'll get done tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And I did get the flashing off of most of these pieces, except for the antenna L15. I saved that in my test tube here, as I had mentioned last night. And uh, also there's another little piece here. Now, as far as the ant most of the flashing that's on the antenna, I can probably I can probably get it off with the uh, to me a nippers here if, if, I'm, if I'm if I'm very very careful but there's a there's a couple of places okay now I should I should be able to hold on to this and very carefully okay maybe uh, where's my file I know some people say that it's dangerous to use the file, but okay. Now, where where that piece of flashing was connected, and I, I realize you're way back and you can't see nothing. Uh, we we will move in here. Uh, if you will recall, I was talking about these little pieces that are right up at the top here I, w I wasn't sure you know is, was that flashing that had to be removed or was that actually part of the antenna and I, I've come to the conclusion being as that I can see it here on the on the uh, on the diagram you know what why don't I put the micro lens on and, and and I'll move I'll move you in here and then you'll better understand what I'm talking about and I've, I've got an idea of how to well I'll, I'll talk about it at the time <sighs> Okay, first of all, we'll talk about this piece here. I haven't done anything with it since I nipped it off. Might be able to see right out on the very end here, there's a little piece of, at first I thought maybe that was supposed to be there, but I realized that, that that's actually flashing. Now, I, I don't want to try and do this, this on camera like this because I just can't quite get it at the right angle. I can hold it better in my, in my, in my fingers, most likely. Uh, now, now this piece here, let me get it down so it's more in line with the other one. Um, where's my other pointer here? Okay, now you, you will see this, this little part here sticking out, which you should be able to see there is flashing on it. That is actually this little part right here. Okay, so it's supposed to stay on. 
However, when we put the macro lens on, you'll, you'll be able to see that there's there's actually flashing on that. Now, how, how do I scrape that off without accidentally snapping this? You know, you know I've, I've broken stuff like this before. I, I think it was on the Bismarck, I broke the Ensign Flag staff or Jag Stan's staff or something. I, I broke one of them and had to glue it back on when I was trying to sand the flashing off. And, and there probably is a little flashing along the edge here. I, I think when, once I get this thing off, then I'll be able to maybe turn it on its side onto something and be able to press, where will I get it back here? Be able to press down and sort of hold it and scrape. I would like to get it, you know, looking a little bit more round uh, and yet, I don't want to weaken it because flashing, believe it or not, actually st strengthens the part. Uh, I know that sounds funny, but it does. It's just more material. When you every time you remove ma material, you're you're weakening the part. The more delicate it gets, the weaker it gets. Um, okay, let's uh, get rid of some of this stuff here, and then we'll put the macro lens on. And we'll, we'll, move, we'll move right in and try and get the flashing off of right here. Okay, this one here, I'm just taking that little tiny hair off the end. Alright, and if I can hold the, the nipper, I wonder if I could do this on camera. Okay, I'm I'm holding it. Uh, let's stick on the micro lens. Okay. No. Can can you see the way I've got that there? If you get it just right, I should be able to nip that off. really get my big fingers out of the way here. Got that one little... Where's my hobby knife? Maybe I should put in a new blade. Now I am not going to try to, to sand that down. The flashing on it does not appear to be too, too bad. Let me just turn it around here. And I can roll it. Can't, don't know if I can get this or not. No, I, I don't think I can improve on that. That is so small. And I'm probably going to, by trying to remove that little nub. Now, speaking of little nubs, well, I was putting the macro lens on the. Got a call from the surgeon who did my operation about 10 years ago to remove the cancer. And he was also the same person who did the procedure about six weeks ago that, that I was talking about and um, <clears throat> he phoned to say that there is absolutely no sign of cancer so that was good news that was good news um, yeah I'm just gonna leave that let's quit fussing at it before I break it here okay that little black dot on the cloth is my reference point here so if I can keep this more or less in that area. Now, you, you will see here what appears to be flashing right on the end of that little protrusion that comes out about two millimeters off of the mast. Now, is, now because there is nothing like that 
uh, on the next one up or, or else you might say anywhere else is that maybe supposed to represent a I don't know almost like a UHF antenna or something like that but I don't think they had UHF back in the 20s like a uh, hundred years ago that's more a uh, more recent thing um, I'm just wondering should I leave that on or or should I put on a new uh, number 11 blade here and see if I can't just cut that off I'm, I'm just sort of undecided but once again it's it's sort of like nobody's gonna see it anyway I mean uh, oh. all right let's just for the fun of it let's let's take it off because it doesn't show in, in the manual and you know if you look at the at the manual it, it appears to be okay let, let's just for the fun of it take it off I don't think it's supposed to be there I think it was a flaw in the in the mold, and the mold just did not come together properly at that point. Other, otherwise, that that uh, thing that looks like a UHF antenna would actually be uh, uh, a little bit thicker. At least that that's my opinion. I don't know. Okay, I put in a brand new blade here. I haven't used it for anything. In fact, I used a different blade to cut this tape. Uh, and my thinking right now is maybe we can use the Super Macro. We're going to give it a try. Uh, sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. So, uh, And I've only got one shot at this. Once I remove the flashing off of this thing, it's, uh, you know, I can't, I can't put it back on and redo it. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is tape this thing down so it's not going to move on me and I'll, I'll move you in. Okay. Now the, the piece of flashing that we're going to re want to remove is, is right there. We just want to tape this end down here. Probably going to get my hand in there. My hands in your vision here. Sorry about that. Okay, there. All right, now that, that shouldn't move. And it's on the plexiglass, so it's going to be, you know, got a nice solid backing. So when I press down on it, I don't think I'm going to break it off. Uh, I should, should really be... I don't know, maybe I should put another little piece of masking tape on. I wonder if maybe this masking tape would have been better off right here. Once again, sorry about my blocking your vision. Okay, how does that look? Yeah, that's that's better much better. Okay, let's put on the Super Macro and see what we can do. Now I'm going to try and slip a little tiny piece of card under there to help support that. Because when I push down on it, it kind of goes out of focus. Maybe that card is too thick. Maybe I should have just a piece of paper. I'll just try one more time here. Well, maybe we'll just Okay. 
No. Maybe I should check the monitor. Yeah, there's just a little tiny piece on the top here. Well, it's better. And I'm definitely not going to try and file that down. Okay, now when I bought this Super Macro, I thought I'd probably be using it a lot more than I, than I am. I have to use an adapter. This is an, this is an adapter for the, uh, for the new Z9. Nope, that doesn't go there. This goes here. Okay. Now the this adapter has to go on the regular macro lens. Okay, I think we're back to normal. And I am not going to try and uh, make this better because uh, by sanding it anywhere, because as I mentioned, I will probably just end up breaking it. Okay, when I started out today's episode, I said we're going to do photo etch today. Okay, we need photo etch A1. And uh, we are obviously not going to have time to do very much photo etch today. So, in order to not make a liar out of myself, okay, here it is, A1. To not make a liar out of myself, I've sort of done photo etch. But we're going to have to call today's episode quits. And uh, I guess what I do with A1 will be in tomorrow's episode's rollback. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we will see you tomorrow with A1.